Hey friends, Chris Maholka here. This is the second part of my video on how to use high density foam to make uh, bass poppers, panfish poppers, saltwater poppers, whatever you want to tie that has these high density foam heads. Materials we're going to use. First off, the foam heads. We're going to make a little bit of a tail with some red uh, arctic fox tail. I've got saddle hackles to form a little splayed hackle, some yellow and some black, spice it up a little bit. You need uh, some pieces of either round rubber, just some random piece like that, or a silicon or something that's kind of stretchy and springy. And I'll show you how that comes into play a little bit later in the uh, video. I also use a bodkin on a piece of wood like this so I don't burn my hands. And then I use an alcohol torch as a heat source to make these. So let's get started on these and I'll show you how it works. Okay, what I'm going to do here is a real generic popper, and we're going to do one with just a, to start out with just a square head on him, square on both ends, front and back. One thing really important to do when you're tying with any kind of a popper head is to put your head just behind the eye of the hook, and then go up on your hook shank and mark where that point is, because you don't want to put too much on the hook ahead of that mark that will get crushed underneath the the popper head. So we're going to go just like that and that would be the same if you're applying for for doing one that's a a chugger like that or a little bit of a turnover for a little bit of a diver. It's about the same measurement so we're going to go with that measurement. Start our thread back here. A little bit of base on it. We're going to put some I've got red arctic foxtail, some really pretty bright red, so I've cut a little bit out of that, pulled the fur out of the base, and I'm going to clip it off, get rid of some of those extra long ones there. Now when I put this on, I don't want it to go around the hook shank. I want this to stay on top of the hook shank because I want it to form kind of a flat wall right here for my hackles to lay up against so my hackles don't spin. I've got two sets of hackles cut equal length. I didn't cut the pull the uh, fibers off because I want them to be on there so when I lay them up on my side and wrap around them they flare perfectly out the back. And then I've got a pair also for the other side. I'm going to even those up. Now these two hopefully will lay flat right on the other side, wrap over them, snug them down, and that gives us a nice even matched pair of legs out there, little kicky legs. I'll put a little half hitch on, or two, and right now I'm right up to that mark I put on the hook. The front of my thread is right even with that. I'm also going to add a drop of head cement on there because I want to cement those feathers in so they don't slip out if they get a chance. About like that. So far so good. Now we're going to put in some some hackle to wrap and I've taken two pieces of yellow hackle, yellow saddle, and I've pulled off, I cleared the stems back here on the the base of them, so just the point where the hackle I, I want to keep. I'm going to match the tips of these up pretty close. Flare out all the hackle there. Then I'm going to tie them in. I don't want that really short stuff up front. I don't need it. I'm going to clip it off and lay this in. This is going to be my hackle around, my soft hackle to make water movement behind the popper head. I'll wrap over that. Again, right up to where the black mark is on my thread because I don't want to go any farther than that. And then I'm going to flare that out as I start to wrap it and go around. I've got two hackles here. I'm going to pull everything back and wrap. It doesn't hurt to have a bodkin. If you see things getting hung up and in there to go in and pull them out. We try to keep everything pulled back enough as we wrap. It's just going to be a really nice thick collar.
Okay, I'm just about at this point right now, right to where that black mark on my hook shank is, where the popper head will go. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this off. And to add just a bit of contrast, I'm going to put in a black saddle. And I'm going to do this the same way I did the yellow ones. Take it by the tip, get out, get rid of any uh, extra up there. And again, I can't go too much farther up the hook shank toward the eye because I'm right to the mark where my popper head will tie in. But I wanted to add this little bit of contrasting color between the popper head and the uh, hackle. This guy's got a short stem on him, so I'm going to grab him with a pair of hackle pliers. We're just going to wrap him. Twist him around here until he gets facing the right way. There we go. And just wrap it in one right after another, staying as tight together and as far back as we can get. And we may use the whole hackle. I may just I'll go ahead and wrap the whole thing. I'm going to tie it off a little bit short. I'm getting more on there than I really need. So just go around it a couple times. Trim the excess off. Get rid of these little guys here. Make sure he's secured down really well. Then I'm going to wrap up the hook shank to right behind the eye of the hook and get a coating of thread on the hook shank. Now the tying per se is done on this. I'll, I'm going to take a just an old toothbrush that I use and brush that hackle out just to get it all laying out there nicely. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now you need a piece of silicon or round rubber or something that's got some stretch to it. And what happens a lot of times is if you put a popper head and you put it on a bare shank is if the glue breaks loose from the bare shank, the popper head will turn and twist and won't stay on or slide back or come off. So what you want to do is put on something underneath what's, where the popper head is going to go that's going to have some give to it. A little bit of spring and so this gets put, uh, basically the base of the popper head and it has some springs so things can move around a little bit without breaking loose. Now I'm just going to take this round rubber and I'm going to wrap it. It doesn't have to be tight wraps. This is just your under base basically. And this serves two purpose, another purpose besides being your your under base on here is I'm going to make a hole in the head, the popper head, to slide it on over the hook eye. And when you do that the hole is just big enough that it'll spin on the hook shank. So you want something that's going to fill up that space as well as give some support. So we're going to tie off the thread there, give it a couple half inches in a clip. So now we're ready to prepare our popper head and put it on the fly. One thing I didn't mention is if you do cut one of the heads and it's a little bit uneven, has little riffles on it, you can take like this is a 320 sandpaper, just dry sandpaper, and you can sand it by rubbing it around and it will smooth out the back of the head and it helps even out things so if you have little cutting errors you can always smooth it out and get it looking good using a little 320 grit sandpaper. Now we're going to use the bodkin needle with a handle basically because the needle is going to get hot. We're going to heat it up and uh, you don't want to burn yourself on this. So here's what we're going to do first off. We're going to take the popper head, take the bodkin and we're going to find the front and I always like to make the insertion hole on the part that's going to be at the eye of the hook because that way I can look at it and I can find the exact center where I've got a little dot there and uh, get the bodkin going in straight because you want to go straight through hold this parallel as you can push the bodkin through and try to come out in the exact back center as well if you don't come out in the center you can look and see which way you need to go adjust a little bit and work it around till you've got it basically a little marshmallow on a stick there but you've got it dead center through the middle of the uh, 
popper head. The reason we do that is we're going to melt that hole through the middle of the popper head. Got my little torch going there. So I'm going to I push the head back far enough on the bodkin so I can heat this part up. And I heat that up and then when it is hot I'm going to pull this straight back out through and I'm going to melt that hole down through the middle of the foam so it stays there. It doesn't take a whole lot of heat. Foam melts at a pretty low temp. So I'm just going to heat that bodkin up. Pull it back out. You might even see a little smoke. Now I've burnt a perfect little hole right down through the center of that popper head. See on the back side where it's hotter, it's a little bit bigger than where I came out the front. And that's okay. So that's how we prep the head. Remember I told you two reasons why that's on there. First off is it adds to the, the durability of the fly, but also it's going to take up the space made by the little hole. So we're going to do a dry fit here. We're just going to put the head on and just twist it and make sure everything fits on there. And I'm twisting the same way I wrap my thread so I don't pull anything loose. So now you've got the eye sticking out, dead center in the front, dead center in the back. It looks like a great fit on that popper head. Pull it back off there. Now if you're doing something like a uh, um, chugger or a diver, you put the slanted part at the front. Now if you tie the fly or uh, finish the fly like this, when you pull it, it's going to spit water out the front. If you turn it over and do it this way, when you pull the fly, it's going to chug below the surface and make a little short chug, chug, chug so, uh, sound. So it's really up to you as to which way you want to design the fly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the flat head back on this. And you can see with the hackle that by measuring that distance out, I'm not squishing all this hackle back. I tied it up just to a point where it's going to fit nice up behind uh, the head there and it's going to stay in place but it's going to make a nice transition where it looks nice. To secure the head on I'm going to use a little bit of five minute epoxy. This is just regular flex coat five minute epoxy I use for rod building and fly tying and just general purpose of things. And we're just going to put a little dab. I'll usually make these flies up oh five or six half dozen in there at a time and uh, then glue the heads all at once. Since we're doing a little demo here, we'll just do this one, but a little bit of epoxy. Caps back on, always caps back on, so you make sure you have the right caps in the right bottles and you don't spill it. Then I'm just gonna mix my epoxy, and if you have any epoxy uh, questions, go to my how to use five minute epoxy video. That'll show you the different types that I use and how they mix. So we're just going to get this ready to go. Now, part of the reason I didn't wrap this really tight in here, I left little gaps in there. Some of that is to fill in epoxy. And if you make it really tight, the head will squish some of the epoxy back into your feathers. So we're trying not to do that. So we'll just put a little epoxy and put it mostly toward the front. And we'll let the head, as it goes on and twists, squish that epoxy back farther toward the hackle and a little bit too much there I'm gonna get a little drip going and again as you put it on you twist the epoxy gets squeezed back into those little gaps in the rubber as you go round and round and hopefully it all gets inside there before you get to the feathers just about like that make sure we're all centered up and looking good Give that it's five minutes or so to set up and that would be ready to fish. Now, I'm not going to talk about putting eyes on the fly at this time because there's a lot of ways to do that and that's going to be probably a whole nother video. So that's how you make a high density foam head popper. If you're doing them for pan fish, you know you go to a smaller diameter, smaller hook, uh, shorten everything up. I've seen saltwater ones that are huge. Um, hook style is totally up to you. Uh, I tend to go with straight hook shanks, not ones that have the kinks in them because 
you don't need to glue things to that you want those that hook shank to be smooth for the head to slide over another point is uh, it works better on straight eyed hooks rather than down or up eyed hooks so if you find some straight eyed bass hooks those are the ones that work really great for these patterns it also doesn't affect like if you have a down eye and you're casting it sometimes it'll make these spin which can really be ugly small, sounds like a small aircraft going over the boat so straight eyes are helpful for casting also it doesn't change the action of your fly that you intend on it especially if you're doing something like a um, a chugger or a little spitter so thanks for watching uh, I hope you take in both segments of this video the number one on how to cut the heads and then of course this number two for making them thanks for watching and I'll see you soon